bless everyone. You have reached the TBBC broadcast with your author, writer, speaker, and inspirer, John D. King. How's everyone doing this morning? I'm doing very well. Thank you. I just want to get on this morning just to um, just to let everyone know I am a Christian. Um, I, I really don't consider myself um, religious, but I do consider myself spiritual. Um, I consider uh, myself as being a believer and uh, not a doubter. You know, I believe God is going to work everything out. It doesn't matter what the circumstance or the situation uh, might look like, but I do believe that God will and always show up and fix it or even work it out. And <clears throat> I just wanted to, to get on and um, just to let the people know that, yeah, I do speak a lot about the Word of God because the Word of God is a lamp unto my feet, the Word of God. Um, it's what's planted in my life, and I know um, that it's going to bring success because I know once I apply uh, the Word of God to my life and to the things uh, that I'm working on um, on a personal matter and also the things that I'm working on in my my uh, spiritual walk with Christ and um, and my writing ministry and all these things i i um i tend to take god out of the box i never uh leave my god in a box because i believe um if you leave him in a box then everything you put your hands to do will remain in a box and this and i like to spread my wings and 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 soar and um I like to go out and evangelize. I, li I like to uh, uh, go out and encourage and hit the street and 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 pray for someone or uh, give someone an encouraging word or even hand out one of my books for free. Um, that's what I do uh, concerning um, the writing ministry that God has given me. So, yeah, I do talk about the word of God a lot. And um, I know that that's uh, part of of my lineage. That's part of my um, history. That's part of uh, my inheritance, and that what brings me joy when I'm able to discuss and talk about the Word of God. So um, you may hear more of that, but in the coming months, in the coming years. Um, as we begin to build a relationship together, I'm going to uh, try my hardest to uh, bring forth a lot more biblical things. Because uh, once you deliver the truth about Christ and everything that's concerning God and concerning the Godhead, the oneness, uh, concerning the Messiah, concerning Jesus... All of these things concern the Holy Spirit, concerning uh, the great I Am, the Jehovah Gods. All of these things uh, play a big part in my life. And you may hear a lot of it, but a lot of it is coming out of the books that I have written. It's coming out the things that God has placed in my heart. To bring forward to the world and to you and to his people and to the ones that I encourage. And I, I believe that it will bring strength into your life. Um, I don't believe that it's not going to um, do ha have any uh, negative effect. As long as you apply it, it will have a successful outlook a successful beginning in your life i'm not going to say um an end because when you're dealing with god 
Um, you're dealing now on different levels and different dimensions, and there's no end to God. There is an end to the fleshly man, but not the spiritual man. Because when you die, your flesh is going to shrivel up and go back to the earth. But your spirit and your soul has to go either to heaven or to hell. And and right now in the book of Revelation, it talks about how there is a waiting place for the that our souls and our spirits will be waiting for the coming of Christ. So at this moment when we die, we are not going to heaven or to hell. We are going to a place where we are being going to be waiting for the coming of Christ. And um, I listen to a lot of people when they talk about um, how God is going to uh, do things in their life, how how miracles are being seen more than ever. And I believe that. I believe that God is flexing his muscles more than ever. Miracles are, are being revealed here and testimonies are, are setting people free. And, and people are being, hands are being laid on and people are being set free. And it reminds me um, in the book of Acts uh, where the deacon Philip, uh, he was given an assignment by the apostles to go into a city called Samaria. And the city was so corrupt and um, everyone was dealing with, with sin and and. and there was a lot of leprosy because of sin, and there was a sorcerer um, that was there, and he was uh, doing so much sorcery in the city that it, it bounded uh, the people. And the one thing about this city that God called it Israel's pride and joy. God called the city of Samaria areas Israel's pride and joy. Because the the um, the uh, the city was founded by one of King David's generals. His name was Sarai, and he brought the land from uh, a man called Umri. And when he brought the land, he was a man that worshipped the Jehovah God. Um, uh, Sarai was a man that worshipped and knew God and. And he he began he because he was one of David's King David's generals. So if you um, are one of King David's general, yes, you're gonna know um, the God that he served because he was a a man that 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 um that honored God and everyone that was connected to him in his household and in, in, in his military and in, in his kingdom knew the Jehovah God knew the God that he uh, worshipped. So when Sarai built the city of Samaria, um, God called it Israel's pride and joy because the city was so beautiful and, and there was much worship to Jehovah God in that city. But years when uh, uh, Sarai began to um, marry all of these different types of women, um, they introduced him to the pagan god called Baal, to the uh, 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 false god called Baal, and and when he began to worship Baal, it brought mm -hmm. corruption into his life. It, it brought so much corruption uh, into his life, and and when the corruption um, started to fester. In him, and the sin and and worship and an idol, um, the the city began to worship the same uh, idol called Baal, because once the head does something, then the body's gonna follow. So the head began to uh, worship this idol called Baal, and it brought corruption into the entire city. 
But we have to remember, uh, Jesus himself uh, came to the city and he began to plant seeds into the city. And, and even um, with the woman at the well, he he showed her something that was so important. She said to Jesus that that she worshipped in the mountains. And when I was reading that, I, I, I was like, wow, this woman worshipped in the mountain and, and because the city was so corrupt, so they had to go to a higher place to get away from the corruption. But Jesus said to her, he that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. So that showed me that even though the city was corrupt, you could have still stayed in the city and worshipped. Instead of going to a high place in the mountains to worship. And, and, and it, it reminds me how even though we may live in a corrupt city. But the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us that he that worship must worship in spirit. So you can worship and honor God in a corrupt place. That's why it's important that everywhere we go, we carry the image of Christ. And we are, we are word carry. We carry the word in us. So when we walk into a corrupt place, the corruption shall not overtake us. Because the image we're carrying and the word that we are carrying. That's why it's important to be an image carrier and a word carrier. And when Philip was given the assignment to go into the city, uh, the apostles um, gave him the assignment to go into the city and preach the gospel, preach the good news, preach Jesus in the city. He uh, did not go to the city and condemn them for the sins that they were committing. Or the um, unclean things that was being done and the corruption and all of these idol worshiping that was going on in the city. His assignment was to go and preach the gospel, preach the good news. So that, that's why it's important for us to go out and preach the word of God, preach the gospel, the good news. And when... When Philip the deacon got to the city and he begins to uh, preach the gospel, the lame begin to walk and the sick uh, begin to be healed and, and people begin to have joy because they uh, the shackles was taken off. They was, they was being set free. And so as time went on, the deacon, he had prayer meetings. He preached he has seminars. Uh, he went to go see the sick and the shunning. He, he, he healed. He set free. All of these things the deacon was given the assignment to do. And he carried it out 100%. Because he did not allow the corruption inside the city to distract him and, and, and take him into another direction. That's why as being a, a, a word carrier and, 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 a, and an image carrier, you can go into a corrupt place and set them free. And when the apostles heard about the work that the deacon Philip was doing, they rushed to the city and he uh, uh, and the deacon baptized, and and the one thing the deacon didn't have the assignment to do, he he was not able to lay hands. So when the apostles got there, they began to lay hands, and that's when the Holy Spirit filled the city, and the city was with great joy. I just wanted to let you know to spread the gospel. Don't condemn. But spread the gospel and you have reached the TBBC broadcast. Bless you.